Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. So, back with another super hot sunny day here in South Louisiana. We're in New Iberia, Louisiana again for the second vlog in a row. And if you haven't seen part one, I guess you could call it, uh, last week where I showed you those row, uh, that half mile stretch worth of all those um, like antebellum homes and turn of the century homes and all that stuff. Well, this is right up the street. It's only a couple blocks north because when you come out of that street where all those houses were, you end up right here downtown in New Iberia. Now, New Iberia is a pretty old city. It dates back quite a while. I'll tell you more about the history at all and the dates and all that stuff as we go along. But um, it's got a lot of cool uh, architecture still. The downtown area is you know, still that small town America that has that good feel to it where they've kept things kind of looking the same as they always have. They renovated a lot of the buildings and stuff like that, but for the most part, the exteriors look the same. And they're really cool to look at and uh, I'll show you around and ex explore it all and all that stuff. So without further ado, let's jump right into it because it's hot out here still. It's like 104 today, I think the real feel is. And it's cloudy and humid and there's a chance of rain and all that, but still it makes it more muggy and it's just so hot. This is deathly hot. So uh, I'm gonna do my best and I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump right in guys, let's go. All right, guys, well, what better place to start than right here at the Rodrigue, George Rodrigue Park. And you can see here is this uh, like eight, nine foot rendition of a, uh, the Blue Dog paintings. This is like a three-sided metal uh, rendition of the dog paintings you see a lot in Rodrigue's paintings. Of course, you usually see them, the dog blue, as in uh, colored blue in all the paintings and stuff, but this one has red, blue, and yellow. But it's pretty much known as the Blue Dog in his paintings. And back in the 60s, when he started really painting and becoming known, he was painting pictures of you know South Louisiana culture, landscapes, old Acadiana homes, and stuff like that. Uh, and he's mostly known, as for the landscape, you'll see a lot of the uh, mossy oak trees, like I see a lot, I'll talk about a lot in my blogs. Usually if you see a painting of his, it's uh, filled with, or it's adorned with um, a mossy oak tree or two, an old Acadian style house or something like that. And uh, back in the, in the 90s, 80s and 90s, he started painting the pictures with the blue dog in it. And that's what he really became famous for. And so they have a whole park dedicated, dedicated to him here at the foot of downtown here in New Iberia. And right there, that building right there is the Bayou Test Museum. We've been there before. I did a vlog on that and they're actually expanding all that, that extra piece of building is gonna be a whole, I think they said like 10,000 square foot addition if the lady, if I remember correctly what the lady told me. So one of these days when they finish that, I need to follow up with her. Once they finish that expansion, I'm going to go in there and vlog the rest of it. Kind of like a, an updated vlog on the Bayou Test Museum. Here's a really cool building here. It looks like it's, uh, Maybe one or two different stores inside of there, but I like that architecture. That's very old looking. Like that old you know, Spanish style with the balcony, kind of like something you see in New Orleans. There's a lot of that down here, downtown uh, New Iberia. So let's keep on walking. Try to keep it moving here. It's pretty hot out here. Speaking of mossy, it's not a mossy oak, but it looks like a uh, crepe myrtle with a lot of moss on it. And that's a, a unique combination. Anyway, let's keep on moving. So speaking of the Bayou Test Museum, we're in front of it here, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about the history of the building. As you can see here, might be better to see from across the street, but uh, you can tell it's been updated and, and renovated a little bit, but uh, this used to be called the Dreyfus Building. Circa 1880, in the late 19th century, the Dreyfus Building functioned as a large wholesale grocery. The original brick structure dates back to the period just after the Great Fire of 1870. In late 1929, it was partitioned to create two buildings, which must be like this part, where the stucco looking or the plaster looking portion of it is, where it separates from the brick portion. Uh, partition and to create two different buildings, the Dreyfus Building became known as a sports center. In 1937, it was a popular gathering place of local residents for many years. The building remained vacant until 2003. Wow. At that time, the building was purchased by the city of New Iberia and was designated as the Bayou Test Museum to be operated by the New Iberia Museum Foundation. 
interesting. And like I said, we've been in there before, and if you want to go check it out, I highly recommend it. Really cool place. And you can see, you can check out my vlog to see um, the majority of it, but they are expanding another 10,000 square feet or so. Uh, and all that. But yeah, it's called the Bayou Tash Museum. The foot of downtown New Iberia. Nice structure though, they kept it up. I like that brickwork and that, that uh, even the, the other part of the building right there is pretty nicely kept. And they've renovated all this stuff, I'm sure, to a good extent. Now this part here, I'm gonna step out of here without uh, step out here without getting hit by a car, is the Evangeline Theater. I'm trying to not be shaky here, I'm sorry. Now this is a wonderful piece of downtown New Iberia. They kept this pretty much original. They've done a great job of keeping it looking very nicely. They put a lot of, a lot of work into this. I know that for a fact because it's been a big thing over the years. Still got the marquee there, the original sign. All the, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank, what do you call these? The poster, uh, the movie, these things where they put the movie posters in there. Ah, can't think of it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about though. The doors here, they look very original, very dated. And here's a little thing about the theater. I'm trying to go through these pretty quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on these because we have a lot, a lot to show you. But uh, after the Great Fire of 1870, oh, the, the theater backs uh, dates to 1930 actually. Uh, after the Great Fire of 1870, the Dreyfus Building was partitioned in 1929, with this portion becoming one of the city's early movie houses, the Evangeline Theater. Opened on April 19th, 1930. Wow, that's uh, 15 days after my grandmother was born. Interesting. She's still alive too. 93 years old, still kicking, doing just fine. It was opened by the Theodore Sliman family. The building was renovated by William Bowen to its current appearance in 1940. The vertical Evangeline Art Deco sign that still graces the front of the building originated, original to the theater, represents an early use of neon in Louisiana. Well, that's interesting. After the Evangeline closed in 1960, it remained vacant for over 30 years. Donated to the city in 94, and the Simon family, State Representative Bo Ackle, secured funding to restore the structure, and it's now known as the Simon Theater. Interesting. Just imagine the history. Like people, it's 80 years ago. 90 years ago, you know, handing out tickets here to shows or whatever. And the people that have come through these doors and the performances that were seen in this theater and the movies that were shown in this theater. Evangeline. I love this stuff. I could do a vlog just on old theaters, 100%. As I get to travel more and more, as the channel grows, I'm definitely going to be including lots of theaters. Anyway, let's keep on moving. That's a big one. I wanted to show you guys that for sure. Check out this tribute to uh, Bunk Johnson. Everyone's heard of Louis Armstrong, the most famous New Orleans jazz trumpeter, but few know the music that inspired Armstrong came from William Bunk Johnson in, their, in the 1910s. 30 years later, Armstrong and other jazz enthusiasts lifted Bunk Johnson from rice and sugarcane fields by day and small town banner band by night to international recognition for the New Orleans traditional jazz revival. Pretty cool, huh? They talk about him in the Bayou Test Museum again. Uh, they mention there's a whole section of jazz and all that and they talk about him quite a bit. It's nice that they put that outside downtown though. Now New Iberia was settled by the settlers back in 1779 it was incorporated into a city in 1839. Uh, population, as per the 2020 census, was about 29,000 people. I love these old downtown storefronts like this. You hear the bells back there? That church? It's a perfect view of, uh, I think that's St. Peter's actually. St. Peter's Church here in New Iberia. I think that's what it is right down this nicely laid out alleyway here in the uh, between these two buildings here. You 
Here's this little thing here. It says the Church Alley circa 1837. Frederick Henri du Perrier, under whose leadership New Iberia was incorporated in 1839, along with his wife Hortense Berard, donated the land to St. Peter's Catholic Church in 1837. Du Perrier asked that this alley remain open for his family's convenience when they walked the church from his home just north of Bayou Tess. Du Perrier's home was purchased by the Sisters of Our Lady of Mount Carmel for use as a convent. Day boarding school in 1871. This property served as a permanent location for their school originally opened in 1870. Following the Great Fire of 1899, the alley remained open to accommodate the sisters and their students. Mount Carmel Academy continued to educate girls until this, its closing in 1988. This is a history combination of this building the history of this building and also the alley that goes right to the church. So I was kind of right. It's a perfect, uh, I guess the reason that it opens up right to the church dead center like that is because it was built that way. That's interesting. Let's keep on going. Check this out. There's some cool architecture here. This looks like something <laughs> like the front of the Alamo or something, huh? I love that old architecture. I wish they would kind of renovate it a little bit though. Beautiful piece of work. It says it's a uh, CrossFit overhaul. There's a lot of those going up these days, aren't there? Can't see much in there. I don't want to look in the windows too much, but now this place, I met, I actually know like the owner's granddaughter or something, the granddaughter or something like that of this place, Wormsers, that used to be a pretty prevalent department store here back in the like mid-century time, 40s and 50s. It's a gym now, like a fitness gym. But the uh, structure on the outside, of course they kept the original sign, which I'm so happy to see. Beautiful building, I love those old, those old ones like that. So you get a better view for you without stepping into traffic. Now looking across the street, there's these, uh, a cluster of these different buildings here that are really nice. I love that, that dark gray one, that district art one right there. It's that, that old uh, New Orleans style, you know, wrought iron balcony fencing up there. That's beautiful. That's straight out of the French Quarter. I wonder if you would consider that Spanish architecture just like New Orleans does or not. The next door looks like this Italian, uh, <laughs> you know, villa on the front. That's beautiful. I love that. I don't see any signs on it or plaques or anything that, that would commemorate the date of when it was built. But this one next door to that, that uh, this beige looking with the green shutters there, that looks pretty old. Doesn't look like it's, looks like it's for rent, so there's nothing in there right now. Could definitely use a facelift for sure. Still beautiful though. And the one next door looks like it's occupied, definitely. Can't see the sign too much from here. Then right next to that is a uh, Bojangles business on the corner. It looks like very French Quarter ish too. Sushi and Oyster Bar. That's a popular place for sure. Every time I come downtown here, this place has always got people going in and out of it and sitting upstairs at the, on the balcony at the tables and stuff. Really popular place. Trying not to pass up these ones behind me here. Some more. There's a little bookstore here. That one's neat. I always like this type of uh, roofing that you see here. I love this old storefront stuff back in the you know, mid-century stuff. I, I love this stuff like this. I've said that before in other vlogs. It's like it's cray crayons, C-R-E-I-M, apostrophe S. I just, they always had these unique tile flooring designs, man. Look how nice that is. And these old storefront windows, you don't, they just don't build them like this anymore. And I'm so glad when they keep them up and they renovate them up and are keeping going. So nice. There's one like that next door too. 
they have their own. This was Boabs. And this has the suggestive, you know, lines or arrows pointing you right through the doors. And it says Fusion up there. I don't know how recent that is or if that's what it is now. Looks like a photography place. Portraits and all that. Here's a better view of the Bojangles place across the street. You can see it wraps around there. So what you see here, this building here is a famous Guggenheim, which dates back to 1890. And uh, there's a plaque right there on the front I'll tell you all about. I just want to show you a broad view of it all. Really pretty building. They wrap around balcony and all that stuff on it, but uh, let's go ahead and cross the street and read more about it. It's right across the street from uh, Bojangles that we we're just talking about right there. But the Guggenheim building, circa 1890 here. This building having a second story gallery which extended over the sidewalk was largely responsible for preventing a di uh, disaster, excuse me, fire from spreading throughout the town's business district. As flames destroyed the block just east of here on the night of October 10th, 1899, firemen decided that the first opportunity to contain the inferno would be here at Iberia Street. The decision was based on the fact that this building with its stucco walls and metal roof was more fire resistant than any neighboring structure. Thus, as the fire raged ever closer, firemen pumped water onto this building to prevent it from igniting. Interesting. It's a very pretty building. Like I said, it's 133 uh, years old. I'm getting so good at math doing this channel, I'll tell you that. There's a pretty little fountain in here. Feels good in here too, not as hot. Might just go sit in there for a few minutes and y'all won't mind, would you? Looks like it's a couple, one or two different businesses. Maybe an attorney's office or something. Done a good job with keeping it up. Which you know me, I always love to see that. Here's a better view of uh, the Bojangles and all that across the street. More of that uh, iron fencing around it, you know. And there's some parking right there that goes out to, you know, in the, on the back side of this parking lot. That's the Bayou Test River where I started the blog at. There's a plaque right here. Go ahead and cross the street here without getting hit. This park, well actually this parking lot right here is where the vendors set up for the gumbo cook-off which is coming up next month. And we were hired last year to be at the Savoie's Sausage or Foods tent. Which I'm gonna show you that spot in a second here. But this plaque right here is for uh, Kathleen Babino Blanco. She was the first woman to ever become or be elected governor of Louisiana and she passed away in 2019. She got elected governor on November 15th, 2003. Wow. She was very involved in the community. Uh, with many memories of her being very prevalent in this community and in this area. And here's looking across the street, there's a Guggenheim right there. Very mid-century, very mid-century, maybe even 1920s, 1930s architecture right there, it's beautiful. With some more storefront window display windows there. Same thing for this Victor's Cafeteria. Looks like that might have been. That almost looks like it used to be a theater itself. Now it's a cafeteria. And there's another plaque right here for a uh, Dr. Emma Wakefield Paye. November, November 21st, 1868 to August 26, 1946. She was the first black woman to earn a medical degree in Louisiana. Born and raised in Louisiana. To a senator, Samuel Wakefield and Amelia Valentine Wakefield. Wow. Emma graduated with honors from the Medical Department of New Orleans University and was licensed to practice medicine in Louisiana and California. That's interesting. She married Oscar, Joseph Oscar Paye, 
about Belusis in San Francisco in 1900. Wow. That's right before the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's right before the great uh, San Francisco earthquake, right? I think that was in 1907. Could be wrong about that. Anyway, so this big parking lot here is where all the tents set up for each vendor uh, for the gumbo cook-off. And uh, right in front of this gazebo over here that I'm about to show you right there, we were hired last year to work under the Savoy's Foods tent for my photo booth. They rented us out and they booked us again this year. So I think a few weeks from now, about a month from now, we'll be doing the same exact thing. And I'd like to do a vlog on that festival if I get a chance to step away from the photo booth. So anyway, so you can buy tickets and you can go to each vendor tent by tent here. They're just lined up like one, two, three, and just this whole parking lot's full of vendors. And you can try all the different gumbos and whatever else they have at that tent uh, to your heart's content as much as you want. <laughs> really cool though. I do hope to do a blog on it. I didn't get to do one last year because I was too busy and uh, my business partner wasn't able to uh, work a good portion of that for a prior engagement so I had to stick with the booth most of the time but I uh, do hope to step away more this year and be able to walk around and do some vlogging for you and show you a really really good festival so it's called the gumbo cook-off here in downtown New Iberia look at this some more uh, I call I'm calling it Spanish architecture with that that iron fence balcony Spanish architecture look here called Bourbon Hall. That's a popular place. People like to sit outside there a lot and uh, for, for festivals and even just day-to-day, -day, you know, evenings. You know, every day some people go there. It's a regular bar too and they go sit on the balcony and hang out and such. Really cool place though. Like for the gumbo cook-off especially and things like that. You'll see a lot of people hanging out there getting their Bloody Marys and such. It's a pretty popular place. And that beautiful white building there, it's a, uh, that definitely stands out, doesn't it? And a lot of these don't have any plaques or anything, and some of these buildings, I'm sure they're all around mid-century. You know, I say between the 20s and the 50s, on average, and most of them don't have any plaques or dates on them, so. There's another one, look at that balcony on that one. That's pretty, pretty unique looking. There. That's nice. It's cool to see that. And that bottom floor there is pretty interesting too. With those windows, those uh, uniquely shaped windows there. But this gazebo here, we're set up right here for the gumbo cook-off. We're set. Our tent was right here, right in front of this gazebo here. It was a good time. It was like early October, so the temperature was perfect. It wasn't cold yet by any means. It doesn't get cold here until like February. <laughs> it gets chilly around November, December though, but not anything to really put a thick jacket on for until around January, February for us. So we'll take a look down in here. There's a couple poster boards and stuff in there that say a little bit about the town of New Iberia. Louisiana. What's that say? World peace begins at home. We mourn the victims. We celebrate the survivors. We affirm a nonviolent future. Domestic Violence Awareness Month, October 1994, candlelight vigil. Interesting. Let's go see what these say and show. Ooh, it feels good in here too. Doing it all for you guys, just sweating my butt off here, doing these vlogs in the middle of the day. It's like 104 today. Oh, it's just some advertising for the, the lighting. It's not too great in here, I'm sorry. African-American historical figures. Steamboat days. 1819 to 1843. And all these things, I know because I've been there, are topics covered at the museum, at the Bayou Test Museum. Yep, I remember seeing all about the, uh, the steamboats and all that. 
course, Tabasco is here in New Iberia. Everybody knows what Tabasco is. Made right here. Look at that. Now, for those of you who don't know, the barrels that they use for the Tabasco mash or the Tabasco product are interchanged with Jack Daniels' barrels that they use. Here's Avery Island. We did that vlog. Or Jefferson Island. We talked about the uh, Lake Penure disaster and all that. Trying to get this. I know the lighting's kind of low in here, so. Yeah, cool. We went there before. We saw those uh, peacocks, didn't we? Yeah, I guess these all these displays are just advertising what New Iberia offers and such. A lot of things we've talked about already. Main Street, New Iberia. Some of those buildings are still there. There's no date on that picture, but you can kind of assume when it's from. Anyway, like I was saying, the uh, barrels that Tabasco uses for their mash, for their Tabasco, are the same barrels that are used at uh, Jack Daniels. Bet you guys didn't know that, did you? Now, this, on, the, on the spot here, I can't remember if Tabasco uses them first or if Jack Daniels uses them first. I, uh, I don't want to assume. I do know that. I just mixed it up in my head, though. I can't remember if they go to, if Tabasco uses them and then gives them to Jack Daniels to use or vice versa. Lieutenant Colonel Francisco Bolligny, Bolligny. 1736 to 1800. Nice veterans memorial back there. That cool looking bell. That's pretty neat, huh? Looks like it's roped off down there. Some of it's roped off. Nice memorial for veterans. A lot of people do that. Especially with me being a veteran, I always appreciate stuff like that. When I see cities do that or towns doing that and making specific areas for that to commemorate them. It's called Bulligny Plaza. B-O-U-L-I-G-N-Y, Bulligny. You guys can maybe tell me how to pronounce that. And of course, the Bayou Test is right back there. You can see it vaguely. That's how close downtown, it's along the Tesh. Downtown New Iberia is. So yeah, as you see here, the, uh, what we were saying earlier, 1779 settlers from Malagueno, Spain, led by Francisco Bellini, established New Iberia on Bayou Tesh. The Spanish speakers called it Nueva Iberia. I might not be pronouncing it in a good Spanish way, but you know what I, you know what I mean. 1765, French-speaking Acadians arrived after being expelled by the British from their settlements in Canada. Uh, we've gone over that before, haven't we? They soon established communities throughout the Bayou country of South Louisiana and began developing a culture that endures to this day. First rock salt mine, May 4th, 1862. 1825, first steamboat. Louisiana Statehood, 1812. Mount Carmel, 1872. Essani, Essani, opened 1937. I wonder what that is. Essani, Essani. Never heard that word before. Nice mural though. 
I always like a good mural. It's just a nice pavilion to do a lot of, like during the gumbo cook-offs and things like that, they'll have things going on in here. And it looks out right over the test over there. So anyway, let's get back on the street and show you some more downtown Main Street things. What? No skateboarding. Denied. Well, this building's pretty neat. Looks almost like a face, huh? With the two eyes and the mouth. <laughs> Can't tell what type of place it is. Let's see if it has a plaque on it. Looks like there's something on there. Well, I was wrong. It's just a sign that says you must be 21 to enter. So, oh well. It's a cool little, uh, very New Orleans-like entrance. Like a stagecoach entrance. Again, that you see in New Orleans a lot. Into this place, you can come and hang out and dine and watch TV. And it's pretty neat, huh? I bet you it was a stagecoach entrance. You see a lot of that in New Orleans. The place is called New, or uh, New Orleans, Napoleon's Tavern. Again, to me, it looks like a, almost like an Italian type of architecture there. And that's, that's the pavilion we were in a while ago. The covered pavilion back there. Cool, this used to be in Abdallah's. Now Abdallah's was another very popular and very successful department store here in South Louisiana. Lafayette, I think, might have been the original because Lafayette used to have one and the building is still there. But look at this. Uh, decorative floor tiling like we were talking about earlier. Like a, like a big star in the middle. But Abdallah's was a very prominent and popular department store uh, mid-century. And I don't know, I'm pretty sure Lafayette was the original one. But I don't know. Maybe that was the original right here, I don't know. There's some more. Armentor Jewelers. Oh, Armentor's Jewelers have been around for a long time. I wonder if that's their original store here. Again, it's very mid-century, uh, unique to that time period. Um, architecture here with these display windows and, and the entrance there. I always love that stuff. More boutiques. Blue Butterfly Boutique. Not really my type of thing, but it looks neat. This is neat looking too. Now if any of you guys, I know some people have made suggestions. In fact, actually this was a suggestion. People, a few people wanted me to come and visit downtown New Iberia, Iberia and show you this stuff. So. I'm always reading your comments and going off of your suggestions. So if you have any suggestions of towns or cities like this that you want me to come and visit, just leave comments or let me know. I'd be glad to come and check them out. Look at that neat little place right there. Promotional image advertising. Wonder how old or new that building is there. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Almost looks like it could be new almost or just totally renovated i don't know the way it's kind of set apart like that i don't know some more uh, new orleans style balcony going on there spanish slash french maybe architecture <laughs> By the way, also guys, thank you so much for leaving comments about the different types of architecture. I am not an architect, I don't know much about architecture, I'm learning as I go, but uh, you guys have definitely pointed out and gave specific names and titles to certain types of architecture, and I really love that. It's, it's a learning, it's an, it's an education for me, so I do appreciate that. This building's pretty big, a three story, three, four story building up there. The 
Doesn't look to be very occupied, if at all. It's neat, though. Look at this place. This is very neat. It's like a white, glossy white painted brick castle looking place. Fortress. I don't see any plaque on it or anything. Definitely looks like a castle, even on the side here. See if I can step out in the street for you. Wow. That's awesome. I wonder what this used to be. It doesn't say any it doesn't say there's no plaque on it or anything. Whoa. Almost stepped off the curb there. This place here looks like it used to be a fire station or something. Just the way the windows are and those arch windows and stuff. Looks like that's a business now. You would think that with how old these buildings obviously are, they'd have more, like a plaque on each one that says when, what year it was built or something. I'd like to see more downtowns doing things like that. You know, just a simple plaque on each building that says when it was built. Oh, look at that, uh, that old walkway right there in the railing. You know, that's pretty dated. Like that reddish color to it, that's pretty nice. Called CoSource now, so it's obviously a business now. It's renovated it, the inside at least, or using the inside of it. Interesting. And this right here, whoa, behind me. I love, love these old gas stations here. And it's an old golf one too. I'm fascinated with these old gas stations. I always picture Somebody driving up, let's say it's 1945, 1950, they pull up in those classic cars and the bell dings when they roll over that, that wire and a gas station attendant comes out and services your car, fills it up, checks the oil, washes the windows. Look at this old, this pump is still here, check it out. Probably get a whole tank of gas for three dollars back then. Might not even cost that. Man, look at this sign. I wonder how old that sign is. That's so neat. Man, that's cool. Golf was very prominent back then. You don't see many of those anymore. Look how cool it looks against those clouds too. Good job, Matt. <laughs> That old Coke machine there, check that out. It's all barricaded, this parking lot's like roped off and closed off with a gate and all that, so I don't want to jump the fence and go in there, but uh, you can see, vaguely see, it's very much kept original, probably on purpose. The old golf sign there in the window. There's probably some memorabilia inside that little waiting area there inside that room. That's as good as I can get it for you. So I don't want to jump the fence. This is all closed off as you can see. So I don't want to intrude. I'm zoomed in here though. I'm trying to give you guys a good. I'm sure you can kind of see in, inside the windows there. and You can see kind of the uh, nostalgic things. Man, that's so cool. So cool. Look at that. Good golf. That'd be pretty cool if they if they made the numbers if they you know made the numbers reflect in those uh, on the gas pump right there to reflect the price of gas back then. That'd be neat. Zoom back out and get this place. This is pretty cool. Got a little bit left to go here, a few other buildings. Let's go ahead and keep on moving here. 
So right next to the gas station here is Fudget Bakery. When you just say to yourself sometimes, Fudget, I want some fudge. <laughs> Pretty cool little uh, setup here out front. Fudge it, a sweetery eatery. Cigars, black dog, cigars. Neat little building, looks like, looks like it used to be an old sheriff's office or something. Doesn't it? Uh, highly recommend what I've, other, I've said about uh, when we looked at the Main Street, New Iberia homes on the last vlog. I'd say in the cooler months, maybe November, late October, November. Get here, you know, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning. Earlier the better. Get a good cup of coffee or something, park. You can park right along in front of those houses. And there's plenty of parking downtown here, like I said. Get a cup of coffee and just stroll up and down the, 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 the strip, the main, the main street here. And, uh, just take a look at all the old architecture, all the old houses. I would have much rather done this vlog at that time of year, but I didn't want to wait. I got other things planned for that time of year. So uh, I decided to do it now. Plus that time of year is a very busy time of year for my photo booth business. So uh, Hebert's Hotel. That's pretty neat. So, uh, like I said, it's a busy time of year for me anyway, so I don't want to, I don't want to put off too many things and over, overbook myself that time of year. So I went ahead and did this one now, these last couple, but, uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Coming down here, taking a look, park your car, get a cup of coffee, come walk around when it's nice and cool out, unless you just really like the heat, if you're weird like that, but, uh, it's a nice area, definitely a nice area. I recommend coming to see it. Let's go take a look at that church right there and I'll close it out right there for you guys. So look at this beauty. I've actually done, speaking of my photo booth, I've done an event here with my photo booth uh, two, three years ago. In the backside, it was for the school itself for a Christmas function they had going on. Beautiful place. I'm gonna cross the street here in a second and uh, give you a close up, but right here on the corner here, corner lot, beautiful. Oh man, this shade feels so good. So, this is the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany. And uh, I already know the history of this place, so I'm gonna show it to you guys though. It says, built in 1858. Yes, that's in 1858 on land donated by, donated by Harvey Hopkins. Consecrated May 16th, 1858 by the Reverend Leonidas Polk, first Episcopal Bishop of Louisiana. This Gothic revival structure is the oldest non-residential building in New Iberia. During the war between the states, the church was used as a guardhouse and hospital by Union troops. Behind the altar is a Tiffany stained glass window installed in 1884. This is a perfect place to close this vlog out on. This is pretty interesting. This church was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1977. I knew the year it was built, but I didn't know the rest of that history. That's very interesting. Look at that. Eighteen fifty-eight. Oldest non-residential structure in New Iberia. Holy cow. Let's see here. Walk around the side here and see some of this architecture. Definitely has that gothic feel to it, no mistake about that with those windows, huh? Wish I could see that Tiffany stained glass. Maybe we can. I guess the altar's on the back side here, so let's go see if we can go around the back and see it. Wow. I've been around the back side of this school here before when I was doing my photo booth event, but I never got to really focus much on the church itself just because I was here for other things. Wow, this must be it. It's gotta be it. I'm assuming it's it. 
I'm hoping it's it. But man, look at that. I wonder if that's that Tiffany stained glass. Has to be, because that's, I mean, it's directly rear of the church. Stained glass always looks outside. It's always on the outside windows, usually, so it's gotta be it. Beautiful purple, like a lavender color too. Wow. Amazing. I love stuff like this. That's what my channel's all about. All right, guys, well, that's the end of our three hour tour here in New Iberia, Louisiana, downtown Main Street. I hope you enjoyed all the old architecture and the uh, history of it all and all that. And uh, what a perfect place to end the vlog in front of this beautiful church here. 1858, the oldest non-residential structure in the city. Beautiful church, isn't it? We have to see that Tiffany glass in the back. That's awesome. But anyway, it's super hot out here, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my truck, blast the AC, and curl up in the fetal position for a little while. And I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bells, all that stuff. Um, feel free to go to my Patreon page and donate to the channel. It definitely helps me do more travels like this and uh, more quantity and more quality, believe it or not. And so uh, with that, have a great rest of your weekend and long Labor Day weekend. I love you all. God bless you all. Stay cool, stay tuned, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. See you later. Goodbye.